Now, talking to her, you mentioned a lot of parents thinking here at home, thinking about that shooting and thinking about maybe addressing it with their children. It, and it can be difficult. We want to bring in now, joining us live, Erica Hochberger. With the, she's a clinical director at the National Children's Advocacy Center. Now, Erica, good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning, first off. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I want to talk about why it is important that parents consider talking to their kids about what happened in Nashville. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times it's really natural to want to shield your kids from things, um, especially the negative things that happen in the world. Um, but our kids are so connected. You know, they've got usually phones and iPads and, of course, friends at school. They hear things on the radio, see things on TV. Um, so they're aware of a lot more than we sometimes realize as parents. And so that's part of why it's important to talk to them so that you can give them good information that you want them to have. And at the same time, there's also the discussion on how much media exposure kids should have when it comes to events like this. What is your advice to parents? Oh, I would limit it. Um, you know, anything that we think about a whole lot or give a whole lot of attention to takes up a lot of brain space for us. Um, and so I would definitely shield your kids as much as you can. Um, give them enough information that they feel confident that they can stay safe, that they know people who can help them, um, but not enough that they would dwell on it. And so when parents do decide to sit down and have a conversation with their kids, what are some common reactions they can expect? Um, well, you know, so I think it's important to realize that the parent and the child are both going to probably have a lot of feelings already because this is really scary stuff. Um, you know, really scared, maybe really angry that this could even happen at all. Um, grief for the people involved, you know, that are more directly affected. And so I think it's important to acknowledge all of that. And then I think as a parent, you want to think about what is my purpose in having this conversation? What do I want my child to come away, you know, thinking or feeling or knowing how to do? Right. And say you're taken off guard that your student, your child brings this up to you. Um, I guess, what is the best way? What is your advice on just how to start off that conversation? Yeah, um, so I would get really curious with them um, and kind of get a sense for what do they already know? What do they think? What are they worried about? And then that will help you tailor the conversation to them. You know, there might be some misinformation that you need to clear up. Um, and when I say that, I don't mean getting into lots of details about the violence that has happened, um, but I do mean maybe misinformation about what they would do in a situation or what safety protocols are available to them. Um, so you want to make sure that they're aware of all those things. Absolutely. I want to thank you so much for joining us, Erica Hochberger with the National Children's Advocacy Center. Again, thank you for giving us that input.